Hello and welcome to the Summer Standout Series. This series aims to create a month of conversation around what standout means in the accounting space. So what does it mean? How is it relevant or important? How does it benefit a firm and its clients? And has this changed over time? Yeah, the dynamics of the accounting space is definitely moving forward. And of course, what's going to happen in the future and, and what does that mean for standout? From my perspective, standout can be seen as a dirty word, but I believe that differentiation has a place in all sectors, including accounting and bookkeeping. And the sooner we grasp the nettle, the bigger the opportunity will come your way. And I think there's a massive opportunity to build standout as a superpower and to drive better value for our clients. So behind this idea is to find out what it really means to you. And my first guest is the inimitable uh, motivational leader, Brad Burton, who is a big standout person. And uh, I'm sure that most of us, if not all of us, have um, seen him, heard of him. But, but thank you very much, Brad, for being here today. And do you want to just give us a few words about your background for those who've been under a rock for the last 15 years? So listen, there's two versions of me. There's a good version and there's a not so good version. It depends which version you want. Let me uh, just share the short version, the whistle stop tour. So uh, born 1973, so I'm 51, left school with no qualifications, moved 14 times from the age of eight to 14. Mum brought me up as a single parent. Uh, Oh, yeah, I got shot at at 21. I've done four years on benefits and um, been addicted to drugs twice and delivered pizza at 31. So there's that version, or there's the other one, the kind of last 20 years version, which is a four time best selling business author, the former UK's number one motivational business speaker. And of course, uh, I was the founder of Four Network, the UK's largest joined up business network uh, across the UK prior to the pandemic. And I'm responsible for 68,000. Or, or the give or take 500 uh, business networking meetings across the UK. And now more uh, recently, in the last four weeks, I've rebranded and actually call myself motivational, full stop, leader, full stop. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I think what's going to be really brilliant about today, those two different brads, because right. actually, you know, the bridge from one to the other is the really important piece. And actually, there's a theme for the, the brad before, who was like a big personality standing right. out you know being there creating trouble and mess and all of that good stuff but still being a standout yeah but maybe yeah, for the wrong there. reason you know what's interesting about this um <clears throat> Philippa, is that years ago many years ago i got employed by a company i was about 27 26 or whatever and the um the the owners used to go to like uh, soho house over in london and spend thousands of pounds entertaining and, and i was involved in that the the, the entertaining and they said to me one evening drunk he said you do realize what we call you don't you i said no you've got no idea like why we hired you i'm like what are you talking about you don't realize what a complete nut job you come across as what are you talking about it's a bit like saying to a fish what's the water like and the fish says what water so they said to us we call you the brad grenade what he said we just throw you in a room full of squares and within about 10 minutes everyone's your best mate do you not understand what you do no, and it's funny that that was, you know, uh, 23, 24 years ago. And actually, that's what I end up doing. This is what I do. My, my kind of role is to walk into rooms full of strangers and win them over fast. That's what motivational speakers do. And also, that's what I did with my networking business. So fundamentally, it's core. This has always been what I am. But I think uh, more recently, I've kind of expanded on that and leaned into it to become that that version, the best version of that. Yeah, but I mean, at the end of the day, that that is standout. I mean, if you are that grenade, I mean, yeah. ultimately, they are yeah. expecting you to go in and be noticed. Now, you can be noticed for the right thing and you can be noticed for the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. I think certainly among accountants and bookkeepers, you know, if they're feeling anxious about, you know, building awareness or putting themselves out there, what mm -hmm. they don't want is to be standing out for the wrong thing but i think what you've done is you've taken that power haven't you and you've turned it into a real think, positive yeah that's right you know i look at the whole thing and, and about standing out is that people say oh brad your style is not for everyone or people will say you know you're your marmite and and the only people that say uh, i'm marmite are people that don't like me right people that like me would never refer to me as such but here's the thing where i believe that people go wrong in business and in life is they look left and right and they take a cue from whoever stood next to them 
And actually, if those people look left and right are vanilla, you end up becoming vanilla. And in order for you to, uh, to, to certainly in today's day and age, to stand out, you need to stand out. And the question I would ask is this, how are you fundamentally different to your nearest competitor? Because if the only answer is, is price, do you really want it to come down to that? So you need to separate yourself from the pack. And one of my other Bradisms is you'll never be the market leader, copying the market leader. So in order for you to break through, you have to lean into everything that you are at your very best. Yeah. And I think with with Marmite, and, and I've heard that as well, and I think, you know, positive or negative, you at least stand for something and you're different. And I think when it comes to stand out and you've done the same, mm. you've decided what you want to stand out for. You know, you've decided what your secret source is and what brand Brad Burton is. And, you know, and then the you've gone out you know, to find them. It's to be me. And if people yeah. don't like me for being me, that's OK, because I like me for being me. And that it's right at its core and its foundational baseline of what standing out is, is being you, because we leak the truth. And I promise you, you're going to put a mask on, it slips eventually. So, you know, everything that I am, I am. So if you saw me at ZeroCon, for instance, right, is available on YouTube. But if you saw me at ZeroCon, you know, I spoke to Gary Turner, the, the, the MD founder at the time, and I said to him, Gary, can I swear? And I'm probably the first person to ever swear on a ZeroCon stage. And Gary said to me, yes, you've got two swear words. I use three. Right. But the point I'm making is that somewhere along the way, I needed to be me. My job as a, a back then, a motivational speaker, is to go in to inspire, to motivate uh, 3,000 uh, hungover accountants. And I could not swear and not offend anyone, right? But I'd also not do the job of waking people up and to get them tuned in. So in order for you to stand out, you're going to have to do things that not everyone agrees with, that not everyone likes. And I said this the other day on a post, name one person in the history of humanity who has been liked by everyone. It doesn't exist. That individual doesn't exist. You could be Gandhi and somebody would want to put a bullet in your head for your views on world peace. It doesn't make no difference. So at its core... For you to stand out, be you. And if people don't like you for being you, that's okay. Yeah. And I think, as you've said, so your your interpretation of, of, or understanding of stand out is, is be you, as you've said really clearly there. And that doesn't mean that everybody's got to turn into some kind of massive kind of ego on a stick. Or, you know, if, if somebody is quiet and reserved, Yep. It doesn't mean that they've got to change from that, does it? It means that they've got to think about a way of, you know, working with that, making well, well, the most of it. I think, I think you know, pushing yourself. Look, not everyone can be jazz hands, right? And not, everyone, <laughs> not, not everyone should be. Certainly on social media, not everyone should be. But what you need to do is you need to, <clears throat> to turn on. The, so if you think about my wife is the biggest introvert you've ever known in your life. Fact, I, I promise you, she doesn't necessarily like people. She likes animals, um, which actually probably steps up as to why. Anyway, but nonetheless, <laughs> the idea really is, is, is you know, the version of me when I go into a, a, a event or to speak, people expect a version of me. People expect me to be this big character. Am I really that guy when I'm, you know, I'm at home high-fiving the kids and going, woo, of course not. But what we need to recognise is that when we're being seen, we need to stand out. So I refer to it as main character energy. So when I walk into a show, shoulders are back, got me confidence, and I put a swagger on, which actually I wouldn't walk around like that because people are like, that. oh, who's that? That's that Brad Burton. You've got to be that version of yourself. Now, that version is me in the same way that the version of me, I've been, I've been toast and, and, and having a cup of tea, playing my computer games, my pot belly out. That's the version of me as well. There's two versions of you. There's a good version. There's a not so good version. But not only that, there's a, a low key version and there's a, a, is a there's a more higher profile version. So my version of, of of me when I go to to a show or when I'm presenting is here. My wife's version of here is here, and that's okay. But you do need to stand out because you know somebody said mentioned about before, sorry you somebody you mentioned before about you know accountants that are anxious about standing out. Well, you can be anxious about standing out or you can be anxious about no revenues coming through the door, no customers. Which one do you want to be anxious? Choose your anxious. And that's why, you know, I, I, I've fundamentally changed my life by leaning into this best version of me. And that's what you should be. Yeah, yeah. And it's dialing it up, isn't it? It's kind of finding out what it is, that, um, which is what I do, essentially, which is course, what is exactly. your secret source. And then get people to dial it up and really sort Correct. of make sure that people are crystal clear. But... For it, looking at the accounting space, and you've made massive inroads into that, mm. you know, you've got a lot of clients in the space. 
what have you noticed about this idea of standout and, and how have you been um, welcomed or received or whatever? What, what, what are your thoughts you know, on that? You know, what I do is I help people become the better versions of themselves. And I say to them, look, we need to like ramp this up here. Oh, but I don't like posting. I don't know what to post. OK, then what I want you to do is I want you to write down for the next 24 hours everything you think of. You're in Lidl, Alde, Sainsbury's. Oh, what's the difference between a, a, a 12 pence a tin of beans and a 42 pence of be can of beans, 30 pence? And actually start talking about that. just everything. Everywhere that you look is about inspiration everywhere. And if you look at this whole setup that I've got here, it's, it's, it's set up to inspire me. If this was like a, a, a grey wall and an Al-Qaeda hostage video, it wouldn't inspire me. But the yellow, oh, I don't like your yellow. I love it. The imagery, I love it. And that's what you need to do. You need to inspire yourself at every moment of the day. Look, running a business is tough. I run one for 20 years, right? I started my business, 25,000 pounds in debt, built up a multi-million pound business. And actually, I did that with no investment. I did it with no idea other than naivety. So what I want you to do is if fear wasn't a thing, what would you do today? If fear wasn't a thing, what would you do today? Go yeah. do that. That's it. Yeah. And, and how are people kind of responding to that? Obviously, well, but how are you managing to sort of break that shell? Because it is a shell, isn't it? I of course think, it is. With... You know, in recognising that I had to do the same myself. And the best way through a minefield is by following that somebody who's got through a minefield. My, and you go back two years ago, I, I, I used to say that LinkedIn is full of squares and I didn't like it. Right. And I didn't like it. Um, and now what I've realized is LinkedIn is full of squares. If you go looking for squares, LinkedIn's full of your tribe. If you go and find your tribe. So the way that I've linked, or the way that I've got people uh, to, to move, I've asked the question, if we do this, what's the worst case scenario? Well, nobody likes my posts. Okay, I can give you posts. I'll show you something now that nobody likes my posts. So actually, what's the worst case scenario? So what you need to do is just put one foot in front of another and go for it. Can you live with the downside of any decision? You get no likes. Like, it's exactly where you started off anyway. So what's the downside of this? And you need to start talking yourself into things rather than out of. And I think that's what goes on. So if you want to look at a, a way that somebody should use LinkedIn, look at myself, look at Philippa. And you'll see, start seeing that actually you go, why are you talking about carrots? I'm not interested in carrots. I want business content. Well, you might, but somebody who's interested in carrots will start talking. And that's what it's about. And remember, reverse up. Be you. Do stuff that works for you. Write stuff that works for you. And I don't write for your audience. Write stuff that works for you and just post. That's it. So That's what I love, I mean, I, I constantly talking about finding your ideal client and and having and, and standing out in the right place with the right people. And that's yeah, exactly yeah. what you've said, which is hated LinkedIn, needed to find my tribe. So what break it down then sure. for us. How how did you kind of do that? I mean, did you just do what you did before, which was grenade? <laughs> <laughs> yes, online. That's it. So so I created Mayhem. Let me share with you one of the easiest posts for me to do. So I got 10,000 views the other day. Donald Trump, a great speaker. Right? Because I, I, So I, I don't watch the news. Not watch it I remember that years. post. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I, I watched Donald Trump because whatever he got thing. Uh, and I watched Donald Trump and I watched it as a pro, pro speaker looking at what he's doing. What is he doing and how is he doing it? And effectively, he's playing the same 30 seconds, soundbite, 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 next one, all looking uh, statesman-like. And even though he's, he's, he's not, he's, he's, he's madman pro, uh, sort of principles that he applies. And I've got to respect him, whatever your personal views are. But what ended up happening is everyone's personal views came into that post. 10,000 views later, I love that. When I first started, um, I, I, I did a post, which I, I might even do today for lols. But I wrote, never trust the fat motivational speaker. Oh, my God, whoosh! Right. I was a fat motivational speaker. And the first person I had to convince, I had to motivate was me to lose weight. So, 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 you know, oh, you're being fattest. Listen, picture of me, three stone heavier. So, you know, I'm sorry about that. And that's the thing. Oh, I don't want to post it just in case it annoys anyone and gets everyone upset. Stop it. What worry about it. And this is how I did it. So it was Brad Grenade, Donald Trump, easy, easy post. <laughs> anyone who's watching this, do a Donald Trump post about any innocuousness. Ah, Donald Trump, was he any good at business? Whatever. Just do it and watch what happens. Right. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, this is what this is what um Andrew Tate does. He creates mayhem, says something contentious, everyone seizes on it, and the way the algorithms work, boom, 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 and it expands it. And then what happens is it's a bit like dirty dancing the film at the end with the dad. You know, this rock and roll is really quite good. Is that you create all this this <laughs> audience that dislikes you and said it's outrageous, 
And then they go, oh, well, yeah, he said that. You forget what the argument was about. You forget that you didn't like them that. You forget that. And actually now you're you're, you're in their, their vortex. That's social media right now. And I'm not saying it's a good thing because it's not. Because actually people gamified this. People gamify this. And I think some of the stuff that I see online, and I'm not prepared to get into it, but I think only because it's not only contentious, but it would demolish and torpedo people, people's businesses. But I think there's some improper behavior right now, which actually is kind of fishing, fishing for likes, fishing for 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 content uh, to be really what's the word? Uh, contentious, but to a fault. I'd say yeah, yeah, yeah. just just everything I do is just right on the cusp. Right on the cusp of being a, a, a piss taker. That's the reality of it. And but, um, but some people push it a bit too far. Uh, and, and yeah, and I think that's wrong. I think it, I think it's I think it's wrong. And, and the people that they put in that this is why I'm not prepared to do it. This is why. See, there's a difference. I'm not prepared to put someone or some industry into the spotlight and just t- torpedo their their business because I could. And I would get loads of them uh, arguing the toss. What I will say is I put a post on the other day about PR. I was looking for a PR person. Um, <clears throat> And I got 2,000 views, lots of recommendations, not a single person contacted me. So what does that say about the industry? Does it say that PRs don't have any confidence, that I'm not a good story? What does it say? And that's the thing that we need to kind of explore. And, and yeah, look at the opportunity that you have to do something contentious, but just on the borderline. Yeah. I, I love the idea of the, the Trump uh yeah. thing that you So that post I did read, and I have to say I really admired it because I thought the analysis of – his presentation and performance was really insightful. Sure. But the other thing that you've just talked about is, you know, actually, whether you like the message or not, he had a message. Right. And what you you called it a soundbite, same thing. But he repeats it again and yep. again and again. And we all know what he's talking about. It's rigged, cool. you know, yeah. it, whatever, you know, all of those sort of key words that he uses. But what it actually means is that his followers, those people who do buy into him, can absolutely say it 100 percent. Just repeat what he said. And at the end of the day, that's what we're all trying to do. Isn't but it? what happened? You know, with... Philip, what happened is, is people that don't agree with him go on and then, and then once again, the algorithm that we talked about. So you get. So if I go on today, I don't know. Um, yesterday I came from the timeline. Nigel Farage got a, a milkshake thrown at him. I'm going to put a post on today. Hey, you guys, do you think it's justified to, to, to throw milkshakes at politicians? Watch what happens. Right? And in every single one of them, it says on their motivational leader, hey, click it. So it's that. And then so so you get this engagement about stuff that doesn't matter, that has no core benefit to your business. And then the next time I post, the seven new followers that I've got, see how clever I am because I post a show reel, show me at zero con and how clever I am. That is how you stand out. Yeah. Exactly. Now, if an accountant was watching this and, you know, they they were obviously kind of dynamic and really going for it, energetic, they kind of they probably already bought into you. Um, What for those who are, you know, a little bit less Mm -hmm. full on, what, what would you say to them? I mean, what is that sort of that next level down, which is, you know, you don't have to explode the grenade, yeah. but, you know, there are lots of different ways of, of standing out and kind of make getting cool. your message out there. Yeah. And I know you've worked with some of them. I know some of the clients who you've worked with and they aren't big, you know, they're not big. Um, but the big business. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But but they, you know. And, and you wouldn't, you yeah, you, you wouldn't see, see. This is the thing with me. You can look at me and go, "Oh, it's brush, it's brush, it's brush," and actually, that is the that's the the, the cover, right? That's the book, yep. that's the, the the cover of the book. You never judge a book by the cover. Now, you know, these are the these are the kind of things that I do, right? And this is about getting deep into your brain. So, so people who never get beyond that will never see any of that. All they'll see is this and go, "Ah, Brad Burton's a this, that, and the other." And that's okay because you know what? The world's a big place and you can't appeal to everyone. But what you should do is you should appeal to yourself. Everyone has an opinion. Everyone has a voice. Start it. But what you do is you end up looking and you you, you post. And I'm guilty of this. You know, I post and get 10 responses. Somebody else posts, right? And they get 100 responses. But what we end up doing, you should focus on us. There's a reason that racehorses wear blinkers. They don't give a toss about the competition. And whilst you're focused on what they're doing, what they're doing, you're missing your whole thing. Share an opinion. Share an opinion, something that you think about. I keep a card here. This is a blank card. And every single day, as I come up with something, I put it on here and it goes in front of me. 
So that's my content for the day. So as I think of something, it goes here. I leave that card every single day and I fill it up. My, any thoughts, anything that's sensible, it goes there. And that's what you need to do. Keep your piece of paper ready at hand. Keep your thinking and write something and then just write a post about it. So write a post. Now, when, I've obviously written four books, um, so I kind of understand the writing game as well. So, But what you do is you write, okay, top line, what would that be? And remember the way that this LinkedIn stuff works is that it shows you three lines. So you make that count. You know, so you make those three lines count. And actually what you put in those three lines, sadly, <laughs> and we talk about LinkedIn now, not necessarily the thing, but sadly it's, it, it's, it doesn't need to have any, any semblance of, of what follows. It's bizarre. So going back to, to that whole thing about how do people stand out, by just turning up the needle and taking it as far as they can without feeling uncomfortable. I don't feel uncomfortable anymore. I used to walk around with a frigging pizza box around trade shows, vertical, and people go, who's a nutcase with a pizza box, vertical? <laughs> well, I think that's that, I think that's that Brad Burton, that. Who is that? Why is he walking the pizza box? I think he delivered pizzas to keep his business afloat. He runs that for networking. Boom. That's what I did. I went to a trade show once with a frigging uh, big pink uh, hat, cowboy hat with, with, with feathers around it and a Vuva sailor. And I remember people going, who's this dick? Now, I wouldn't do that anymore, of course. But when I had no marketing budget and I had nothing to lose, I'd go for it. Now, if you've got something to lose, then all you need to do is just tip it up, tip it up, tip it up. Find the level. Find where the level is of you standing out. And, and if you go beyond it and it starts feeling comfortable, bring it back down because it's never too late to change direction. Yeah. So you, you've had some real experience of the accounting space, the accounting world. I mean, you, you've done Xericon, you know. Accounting you, web. You, um, yeah, done, yeah. All of them, yeah. You've done loads of that and you've spoken to lots of you know high flyers but also others in the industry i mean what what are your observations about them at the moment their ability to kind of stand out and where do they need to go because it's it's quite an interesting space but it, it needs to kind of move on in my opinion i think for me i'm, I'm you know it's, it's, it's people say i'm from um from manchester you're red or blue I don't follow football, but for me, from a um, from an accountancy software perspective, I'm a blue, a zero blue, right? <clears throat> and so I don't understand. I've never booted up zero. I've never used zero. My team do. We had for 12 years. But in essence, I think they, they started on the road of, 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 of making accountancy a little bit rock and roll. And I think everyone's followed since then. Now, I said before, you've never been a market leader, copying the market leader. When I came into the space, Nobody would think conventionally that a guy with genius technology was going to get on the main stage at zero. or a It doesn't make any sense. But yes, it does, because that's what needs to happen. The world and the industry needs to change. It needs to change. When I first went into running my networking business 2006, my understanding about accountants there was, as you'd expect, you know, a, a, a standout accountant looks at the, your shoes, not theirs. So they, it wasn't like a rock and roll industry. It's getting more like that. It's getting more T-shirts. It's getting more jeans. It's getting more. But in order for you to stand out, jeans and T-shirt isn't going to cut it anymore because everyone's got jeans and T-shirts. So therefore, how do you stand out? Oh, it's my service is better. We taught English. We taught plain English. Well, guess what? So does everyone else. So you need to fundamentally at its core – uh, Emma Fox is a great example of this. Emma Fox from Fresh Financials Bookkeeper. You know, Emma has been in business now 23 years. She's a zero winner, uh, two, two times winner. Emma, she started her business um, delivering uh, yellow pages 23 years ago to keep the business afloat while she had three kids. So single mom, <coughs> yellow pages. So what she's doing right now is when she speaks, she's bringing yellow pages out with her and people are going, and it allows her then to ease it. So she's standing out because she's the Yellow Pages woman. And all it is is a little prop from the Yellow Pages. Yellow Pages don't exist. Boom. So it's like, what can you do that is fundamentally different that will that will, will shake things up? IT guy that I knew, walk around the networking event with a tortoise in his hand. And you're going... <laughs> I love that. I've got to ask, what's a tortoise? Ah, I'm glad you asked me that. So... 300 million years ago, these were designed to go slow. Your computer that you designed last year isn't. Managed, Brad, I'm an IT consultant, and what I do is make sure that it's not like, it's that open. And this is what people need to understand. The whole thing about standing out, it's just a conversation. It's just how do you start a conversation? And once you recognize that, that starting a conversation at, the, at, the, at its core, 
That is where opportunity presents itself. So if I go and write something about Donald Trump and I get a DM said, oh, I really agree with your opinions on Donald Trump or I don't agree with it, it starts the dialogue. Oh, really? Why did you say that? Why don't we jump on the Zoom? We can have a chat about it. Boom. That's it. In fact, you and I, you're a neighbour of mine. Like Literally, you know, you know, the difference is that you live in a palatial palace over down yeah. there. But nonetheless, <laughs> with a, with a moat, more people realise this about you. But nonetheless, uh, and, and you've got machine gun nests on the, on the corners. But the reality is, is that you just, this is the whole purpose of standing out. Even to stand out is to start a conversation. That's it. So the whole purpose of standing out is to start a conversation. Yeah, wise words. And I think one the thing that I've just heard, which for me is like a boom, is I call it a hygiene factor. And I think you called it something else, which is, you know, oh, we, we're helpful or we're clear or, you know, right. we, we've got accreditation or whatever mm -hmm. it is. That is a hygiene factor. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody expects an accountant or a bookkeeper to have probably know what, you know, to have done the stuff. Yes, there are others who haven't. But you know what? There is a level and being personable and being this and that, that doesn't cut it. No, you know, we can, right. we're, hopefully if we're professional, we're all personable. We've all got some kind of accreditation or experience. It's got to be more <laughs> than that. You know, when we sat down last time we had a chat and you and I came, you came over to mine and we had a chat and we talked about yep. race, right? Reputation, assets, credibility and experience. This whole yep. thing here is how, there, boom. That is what, any accountant needs to look at reputation, as in like in their field, what how, how highly they regarded, what assets do they have? And I mean in terms of assets, in terms of photo, showreel, the off, off just assets, credibility, how much credibility did they have? You know, they've got some amazing testimonials, how much experience did they have? And then gauge yourself on a scale of one to ten of each reputation, one to ten, assets one to ten. And actually, you can then see which route that you need to go to. You know, it's something that you've worked on. I know, I know, I know we've talked and you worked with, with, with the creative designers and stuff at our price. You know, you've worked on this whole getting this, 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 this visual, right? So that supports and backs up what you stand out for. And I think that yeah. where people go wrong is they do one thing and then going, well, is that working? You know, you, it's like going to the gym and going, well, I've been once, I'm not fit. And this is where, and this is a sales pitch for you in your sessions, but this whole thing, you know, and you did it 99 quid, which is too cheap, but nonetheless, as a, as a special, but nonetheless, but that, this is, it's not about just doing it once. You kind of got to go back to the gym. You got to, you know, you don't get fit going once. And I think that's the problem. I think there's this expectation right now that you do press button once and, and the entire world's fixed. This is a slow, methodical, consistent process. You know, you look at some of the stuff that I do in terms of my photographs and this, that, and the other. I've captured it over the last 15 years. I've captured it. And every single individual will have a Dropbox or a load of old photographs of when they was a kid or this, that, and the other that you can use for content or you can use to, to paint a picture. Emma Fox with her, you know, I said to her at a core, you being a single mom, bringing up, a, a, you know, a three kids, delivering yellow pages, building a business that become twice zero winner, selling a, a business as well. This is massive. But this story is how you stand out, not your quality of service. Not your we speak plain English. It's you and your story, your stories that tell and your stories that sell. Yeah. And I think one of the things I love about you and your story is obviously you tell it time and time again. So a bit like a bit like Trump, though, but you it has to be remembered. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And yes. also you have to know what you're about and what's core to you. So, yes, you've rebranded recently. Um, and you know, doing can I tell you about that? Two, two things there, right? Yeah. Have you ever seen The Simpsons? Yep. You ever seen Troy McClure? Don't know. I'm Troy McClure. You may remember me from the TV show. <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah. Every single time, this is this has been every time that is on screen. It opens up with I'm Troy McClure. That is what I've done. That's how I stand out. My name's Brad, the old, the old pitch. My name's Brad Burton. I'm, I'm the uh, I'm the UK's number one motivational business people uh, speaker. Easy for me to say. I'm the UK's number one motivational business speaker. People say to me, Brad, how did you become the UK's number one motivational business speaker? And it's a great question. I just made a website and said I'm the UK's number one motivational business speaker. And the first person you've got to convince of your brilliance is you. If I said to you, I'm the greatest, I'm the greatest, which box am I referring to? Muhammad Ali, the greatest. So, so somewhere along the way, I'm trying to claw every single time or oh, change the record. Listen, you're not my person. Right? Anyone that knows and works for me knows that the reason I'm doing it is I'm trying to But, oh, I've said that once. I wrote that six months ago on a post, so I'm not going to do it again. 
So this whole thing is about you recognizing that every single time that you speak, you have a new op opportunity to stand out. Yeah. And also, I think that people don't hear it the first time, the second time, even the ninth time. You know, there is some kind of science out there that says, you know, it's only when you start Seven. repeating things, yeah. even if it's to a client or a prospect or even within your team. Correct. It's only if you keep saying the same thing that people get it, they hear it and think you're actually quite serious about this now. Let me, you're you know, serious. It's, it's interesting. Every time I, not every time I speak, but when I speak on occasion at a corporate, somebody comes up to me afterwards and they go, can I be honest with you? And I go like this. You thought, what a complete dick when I walked out, but now you think I'm amazing. They go, oh, how do you know that? I said, not only am I a motivational speaker, I'm a mind reader. They go, shut up. <laughs> so but what happened with the motivational leader thing is i spoke at a company um i'm not going to mention no names but a two billion pound or dollars i don't even know plc and i asked for feedback from the transformation director and th th they came back to me and they said the only it was 10 out of 10 my team make it eight the only thing that was the only thing that you, you could do differently or better is you undersold it and I was like, what? And I'm just a working class lad from Salford, Manchester. And I was like, okay. And then I had this three times in the last three months. And I swear to you, this is absolutely true. And I'm going to name drop, although King Charles told me not to name drop. The jokes don't get any funnier. And um, Gary Turner said to me, Brad, uh, you are more than a motivational speaker. He said, you know, you're underselling yourself completely. And that's where a motivational leader was born. I thought, right, what do I actually do? Motivation, okay. That's what they call, but what do I do? Lead. And that was where it came through, motivational leader. So consequently, with that, in the last four weeks, I've gone bang, 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 motivationalleader.co.uk, by the way, it's just launched today. Um, but, you know, that whole thing is about, am I have I changed as an individual? Yes. Have I changed drastically from the, the way that I once, once was? You know, nothing's changed. I'm still with jeans, trainers, and T-shirts. Just evolved. Evolved, and that's the point. And that's about where you start with your standout isn't where you're going to end with your standout. Yeah, exactly. And I think some people think, if I do the work now, it you know, I might be different in five years, but actually <laughs> you are the same person, but you evolve and the story continues with you. But you've you've still got to understand what you're all about, what motivates you, where you've come from, all of that Absolutely. good stuff. You know, in order to twist and turn and survive, actually. I have you know, a Madonna I, survived. <laughs> I, I have a painter and a painter and decorator right now outside painting, literally right outside the door. And um, you know, there's a reason for him painting again is because after two years, you need to paint again. That's the reality. Yeah. Maybe longer than that, the pandemic, but nonetheless, right? And, it, and it's like, oh, my wife, well, why are we doing that? We're going to change the, 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 the doors in, in, in three years' time. What about to now? What about now? And then we're so focused on the future. What about now? And I think that that's what we need to do. As part of you stand out, what about now? Right now, how can you stand out? What have you got to do today to stand out? Go and grab a piece of paper and just write, like almost be like a, 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 a Victorian medium. Get a pen, write down, how can I stand out and just start writing and fill your piece of paper up with stuff that you can stand out. And that's your, that's your starting point for you to work yeah. from. So so what's coming down the road then? Yeah, for the accounting space. Okay. You know, we, we're talking about the desire to kind of stand out, write it down right now. And again, you know, I absolutely echo that, which is, you know, start to think. But where where's the accounting space going and um, um, what are people going to lose if they don't if they don't do it now so look the reality is ai is is here and the last six months um you know i use ai i use ai and it's amazing it's just me now i don't have a staff i don't have any staff so at one point i had 15 staff it's just me and actually what i've allowed ai to do for me is a sounding board i literally talk to my ai jenna <laughs> right i talk to jenna and we, we, we talk and, and we, we ideas and Jenna knows me, like learn that's like, whoa. And you can deny this. You can be like King Canute and go, ah, but we, we, we understand plain English. And like, hey, Jenna, what I want you to do is to take the role of an accountant who understands and only speaks in plain English. No problem, Mr. Burton. I'm done. So, you know, this is coming down the line and you can deny it all you want. And you can try to turn around and say, guess what? AI isn't going to affect us. Yes, it is. It's going to have a massive impact on it. But what I would say to every single accountant is that, you know, when my life turned around from this bum that I once was, right, and my wife would still say I'm a bum in some respects, but nonetheless, where my life turned around is when I switched my thinking from short term to medium and long term, to medium and long term. And just be quite clear here, when I started my business on, my wife didn't want me to do it. She told me not to do it. 
She said she wanted me to get three months worth of money before I started. I had no job, I just walked out of one. But even if I had a job, it took me 18 months. And then what happens if the alternator goes or the boiler goes in the car? And now all now we're down to four weeks. And it, it, look, start. Start. Start standing out today, right? Not, oh, well, I'm going to get this up today. You are, you are lying to yourself. How long does it take to do a five minute post? Five minutes. How long does it take to do a, a you know a 30 seconds week? 30 seconds. And this is what people need to do. You're giving yourself excuses. You need to start talking yourself into things rather than out of. So what's coming down the line for accountants? Change. Lots of it. Get used to it. And actually, oh, but I don't like change. Unlucky. Oh, but what about all the uncertainty? Oh, there's all the uncertainty in the world at the moment. Let me tell you something. I was born 1973. There's been uncertainty in my life since day one. There's been uncertainty in your life through day one. And actually, we could have a meteor or an asteroid coming from the planet Zog or the universe from two billion, million light years away that has been on its way for the last two billion light years that is going to wipe out the world. Stop worrying. Stop worrying. Worrying achieves nothing. But change is coming. And whatever that means, on every level, political, geopolitical, on every level, and I tell you what was lovely about the pandemic is it allowed a reset. And actually, it allowed me, my business, to collapse. And it allowed me to get off that hamster wheel of business and recognize that things needed to change. And I'm not afraid of change, as you've seen in the last few months. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, the three things I've pulled out there is, you know, don't be afraid, really. Change is there. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, need yeah, to let change. Me show you. Let me show you this. You need to start. They were on the second day. Be brave. Be yeah. brave. Be yeah. brave. That's uh, yeah. yeah. It's a constant reminder of me to be brave for me. Because actually, if I don't engage that braveness, then I wouldn't do anything. Exactly. So, so, given you've given thirty minutes of your time more, and I know you're a busy guy. So, how can people find you if they're not sort of? On, yeah. well, LinkedIn, obviously. Give, yeah, give us those kind of key... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I'm, I'm making bradburton.biz, uh, motivationalleader.co.uk, LinkedIn. That's it. I've been my Instagram. I got bored with that one. I've literally been it to, four weeks ago. Just find me. And I'm open to a conversation. Literally, conversation. If you want to have 15 minutes of my time, completely free of charge for me to burn your ears off, you're absolutely welcome. All you need to do is drop me a DM and we'll crack it. Great. Great stuff. Well, we've come to an end. Um, it's all about standout in June. Um, fantastic insights, Brad. Thank you very can much. Can I just say, can I just say yeah. that this campaign that you're doing, Summer Standout, makes so much sense. And I would welcome you doing these on a quarterly basis. I think people will start looking forward to them being a thing. I don't know what, oh. you know, the next, what we're in the next is autumn. But do you know what I'm saying? Autumn action. I think that this for you, I think is a perfect brand. I think that I think people will look forward to it and actually start looking forward to to, to each season as you, in fact, there you go, season one, season two, season three. But I do think what you've done here is pretty special. So well done you for standing. <laughs> well, you you are full of ideas, and and thank you so much. And next week, I'm hoping that Ariona Burakatai, or however, I think I've I hope. <laughs> good effort. I, good I, effort. I, I hope I did actually look it up. I did look yeah. it up. So Ariona, if I've got it wrong, you can tell me uh, yeah. next week. But um, thanks so much. It's a real joy speaking to you. And as always, you are the perfect standout and yes. um, just awesome, awesome individual. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you so much, Keith. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.